Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday night. I've taken a couple of nights off from broadcasting because I was just burned out by Hurricane Matthew and everything that was going on with that. So uh, we're going to take a look at what's going on weather-wise now and show you uh, the current temperatures because we do have frost advisories up. So we're already seeing some of the cool spots in Suffolk County drop into the mid-40s. We've got mid-40s across the Hudson Valley and over parts of north, just one station so far reporting uh, in northwestern New Jersey. Actually, uh, it looks like, yeah, it's on the Jersey side in Sussex County. We've got a 46 and a 50. I'm not sure which reporting stations these actually are. Um, let me see if, if I click on it, if it tells me. No. Uh, and then there's a, you can see, there's mostly mid and upper 50s in and around New York City. And then across Connecticut, we've got some 40s already showing up. So we know where we're going with this. Uh, temperatures are headed down. Also in south, central and south Jersey, south of 195, there's a likelihood of some frost and also in southeastern Pennsylvania. So um, let's jump to the uh, satellite loop because we have uh, nothing but clear skies across all of the northeast. The Matthew became basically a nor'easter uh, as, it be, as it transitioned over to a post-tropical storm. And actually that process began down when it was near Jacksonville because we noticed that the rain shield and the wind shield was shifting over to the west side uh, when it was down at that point. So it just kept expanding as it moved northward. And then even though the center actually moved east off the North Carolina coast, the front was able to enhance the rain shield up. So uh, parts of southern, New, you know, most of southern New Jersey and coastal New Jersey through Long Island uh, and parts of southeastern Connecticut picked up a good solid two inches plus of rain. So that was a big plus in all of this. And there's really not much going on. We've got a weak disturbance that's moving through the middle Mississippi Valley. And that's really about it. Uh, the next weather front's not due here until Thursday. And even that's not going to have much. Tropical Storm Nicole looks like it's getting a little better organized. If you look at the clouds, they're moving north to south on the backside of what is uh, a, a, tr a trough or a cold front here and then moving south, uh, south to north ahead of it. And that's the flow that Nicole is caught in. So it's aiming for Bermuda and they've, uh, they've put up uh, hurricane watches up for Bermuda. And when we take a look at the hurricane center's track, it takes it almost right over the island as a hurricane uh, Wednesday night and Thursday. And then after that, it just moves north, uh, northeastward. Uh, there's some interesting things that the model does with it when it gets out there. Not that it will impact our weather, but we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, in, as I flip over. First off, let's show you what's going on here. And you can see the high moves out as we uh, go into Wednesday. We get a bit of a return flow. Here comes the next front and all the showers with it go way north and dry up. The next high builds in and that carries us through the weekend uh, with the, the next weather system approaching on Monday and that falls apart. And then we have a stronger weather system out in the Great Lakes for later next week. And even that one winds up going so far north and west that that one falls apart. So it's quite possible that we may not see rain here for at least the next seven to 10 days. Now on the edge of your screen, you can see the isobars. That's actually uh, representative of Nicole. And, and I'll switch over to um, another region. I know I've got a few of you that uh, are up in the Canadian Maritimes and, and I'm gonna show you what happens. It's, we're gonna back it up. And okay, so here's Nicole moving northward moves over Bermuda as a hurricane, and then moves out to the northeast. And it looks like it's heading for eastern Newfoundland when there's this big blocking high that develops out in the Atlantic, and it just comes to a grinding halt that actually moves it back southwestward and then turns it northeastward after that. And it brings it very close, relatively close to Newfoundland, but still pretty far offshore. But, you know, at this stage of the game, when we're looking out 10 days you know, the margin of error is going to be very high. So I would suggest, you know, probably that this area should, you know, monitor this uh, in the longer term. Uh, just have it in the back of your mind. Um, that, that blocking high that forms in the Atlantic, uh, the model's done this for several runs now. I'll switch over to the European to see if the European does the same thing. Actually, the European takes it right over eastern Newfoundland and then stalls it out and weakens it. So it brings it just about there and then begins to drop it uh, southeastward. So, you know, it, it's all it's all within the same idea uh, with regards to um, uh, 
uh, Hurricane Nicole and when, if and when it becomes a hurricane again. So really the bottom line for us is that our weather is pretty quiet and is going to remain so. Uh, we'll switch to the upper air. Just take a look at the long range. You, know, you already see there's a big ridge in the east um, by day five, and you still have ridging in the east on the European at day 10. If we uh, take the North America view to see what's going on, I mean, it's just really the flow is just kind of organizing itself into something, but I'm not sure what. You know, troughs are moving along. The, the flow is just not really all that inspiring for anything to happen. The Canada's kind of cut off here on the European over the next 10 days, you know, relatively speaking, over the next 10 days. And uh, when we look at the GFS, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, it's, it, it's, I'm not even sure. It's just kind of a mess. But the flow across Canada is pretty well west to east on this run. So this is just going to be seasonal to maybe a little bit below, above normal at times, a little bit below normal at times. But it's nothing that um, really inspires any kind of, um, you know, storm development or unfortunately any additional rains. It would be great if we could get some more rain out of this after what we saw this weekend, but it looks like we're going into a dry uh, pattern. So uh, thank you, Charles, I appreciate that. Um, all right, so the comments, I guess, are kind of short. When the weather's quiet, everybody else gets quiet, but that's a good thing. So don't forget to catch the latest breaking news tonight on Fios One News New Jersey, Fios One News Long Island, and Fios One News Hudson Valley, I'll be there, and in the morning, uh, be sure to tune in to Fios One News. Uh, we've got Brian Fitzgerald and uh, Jeff Banson on, on Weather Patrol uh, to check out what the morning temperatures are like. If you're in the northwestern counties of New Jersey, if you're in the Hudson Valley as you get up close to Route 84, or if, you know, if you're in Connecticut, uh, everywhere in Connecticut except for the coast, uh, I think you, know, you might want to think about bringing your plants at least closer to the house, if not taking them inside. You know, Long Island Pine Barren areas in East Central Suffolk County, mine sea temperatures get down into the mid to upper 30s. I think it'll stay just above frost levels, which is good. And we'll see. One of these cold, cooler air masses eventually will just bring the widespread frost that is, you, you know, usually happens during the month of October. So uh, have a great evening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.